So in looking at the history of mills in Yarmouth, we really turn our attention to the Royal River, of course, which provided water power and resources for mills in Yarmouth, really from the 17th century forward. Those earlier mills in the 1600s and 1700s were really subsistence based. They were grist mills, they were saw mills, later probably tanneries and fulling mills for the production of uh, leather and cloth. Um, as we move into the 19th century and into the 20th century, the mills start to become much more industrialized. So we get things like machine shops, uh, pulp mill, um, cotton mill. Uh, it really speaks to the expanding economy in the United States and the expanding opportunities that people were finding here in Yarmouth and along the Royal River. Over time, there were almost 60 different mills on the different falls of the Royal River. Uh, when we talk about the Royal River, we often discuss the four falls along the river. So the first falls is right at Grist Mill Park, so where Route 88 crosses over the river. You can see the harbor um, and heads up the hill on East Main Street. The second falls is at Bridge Street, so the cotton mill, the brick mill that still stands there, that second falls. Third falls is in Royal River Park. So if you're walking along the trail in Royal River Park, and there's a point at which there are benches and a, an interpretive panel. You can see the water flowing and there's evidence of a mill across the way. That's Third Falls. And then Fourth Falls is really right at the parking lot for Royal River Park. So if you park there and step out and you can hear the water flowing, that's the Fourth Falls. So they start number one at the harbor and then work their way up to number four, closer to the History Center. So the brick mill on Bridge Street was built in the 1840s. It had long been a site of manufacturing in Yarmouth. There was a mahogany mill there in the past. It actually started out um, as a paper mill. Um, that mill burned down in the 18, right around 1850, was rebuilt as the brick mill that we know it today and was the site of cotton manufacturing. So they spun cotton uh, twine and yarn and wove that into seamless grain bags that were produced at that site right from the 1850s until the 1950s. So it was almost 100 years of production um, in that location. The mill expanded over time. It was incredibly successful. So we have photos of the mill in the 19th century growing little bit by little bit. And you can just see how successful that industry really was. The tower that we see today was added right around 1890. So that's another great landmark that we look for uh, when we're dating photos of the mill. If that's there, then we know it was uh, taken sometime after 1890. A lot of the people who worked in the cotton mill on Bridge Street, um, which went by the business name of the Royal River Manufacturing Company, a lot of the folks had come down from Prince Edward Island. So they were French speaking mill workers like so many other main towns, uh, whereas other main towns often drew mill workers from Quebec. Um, ours in Yarmouth came from Prince Edward Island, so it was a smaller community of folks that were coming here to work. Uh, the mill did employ men, women, and some children, um, and it was hard work. People were working 12 hours a day um, and really doing some pretty difficult labor. We have some photos of the interior of the mill showing some of the machinery, the tufts of cotton that would have been in the air. You can just imagine the sound of the machinery in those spaces too would have been pretty deafening. So it was pretty tough work. Um, and it amazes me that that business was in, you know, in operation for so long and successful for so long. There are a couple of boarding houses that still stand behind the brick mill on Bridge Street. Those were built as the original um, boarding houses for the workers. So if you worked in the mill, you could opt to live there as a couple of dollars a week uh, for room and board. And uh, you know, handy to have a really quick commute down to the mill uh, for your shift. The original builder of the cotton mill on Bridge Street built his house right next to the mill. So as you're standing on the bridge on Bridge Street, if you look up to the left, you'll see his original house, also built in the 1840s, just like the rest of the mill complex when that was starting out. So it really is part of this great picture of original industrial history that still survives on Bridge Street for us today. Moving up to Third Falls, we can take a look at the Forest Paper Company, which was a very large pulp mill. Uh, the site on the river had been the site of a mill since about the 1860s. It was a uh, paper mill at that point. A lot of the buildings in that early phase of the mill were constructed of wood and so it was susceptible to fire. It did burn down but was rebuilt in the early 1870s 
And then the mill rights were purchased by S.D. Warren and uh, George Hammond, who were connected to the S.D. Warren Mill Company, of course, in Westbrook and they established the Forest Paper Company here in Yarmouth. And this was a very large pulp mill. It grew from those initial small buildings that were connected to the early paper mill into what would become the largest pulp mill of its type in the country at its height. So right around 1900, 1910, it was just positively booming. Um, the mill expanded immensely over the years, covered about 10 acres, and we're talking Royal River Park. So this is Third Falls as you're walking the trail in the park. You might stop to look at a couple of the interpretive signs or take a look at the flower planters or some of the brick ruins that are in the park. Those are all part of the original mill complex. It was massive. It spanned both sides of the river. So a lot of the supplies like wood um, and other materials that they used to create the pulp, those came in from the railroad. There were spurs coming off of the tracks along Main Street that supplied the mill. Uh, and then they would ship those within the site across the other side of the river to complete the pulping process. Um, it was a really massive operation. At its height, the Forest Paper Company employed 250 people and produced 80 tons of wood pulp per day. It was running 24 hours a day at this time and really just churning out lots of materials. For the process employed by the Forest uh, Paper Company here in Yarmouth, they were shipping in tons and tons of poplar trees, usually about four foot lengths of poplar that were shipped in by train. Uh, the bark was taken off here on site. Uh, they were all chipped up and those chips were poured into what is called the digester towers, which if you're in the park are on the opposite side of the river from the trail. The digester towers were then filled with this caustic cooking liquor. Um, that was the soda pulp uh, process that they used, the soda process that they used. And that would be boiled together until the wood fibers just broke down um, and that could be pumped out. It was bleached and washed. We're using a lot of different chemicals to create this. Um, and eventually that wood pulp was formed into these great big rolls and then shipped off to other paper mills to finish into uh, finished paper. Um, this paper, this type of paper was good for newsprint, magazines. It's not the finest paper, but it's a really good surface for printing and writing. So the Forest Paper Company was in operation until the early 1920s when economic factors and in, you know, industrial chemical forces uh, really forced it out of business and it was no longer as viable as it had been. Um, so it shut down. The site was actually vacant for a number of years until the early 1930s when it, the remaining mill buildings and uh, machinery that was left there uh, were destroyed in a pretty spectacular fire in 1931. It made the newspapers, uh, some estimates put spectators at about 5,000 people who drove into town because they saw the flames shooting from those enormous digester towers and wanted to see what was going on. So it was an incredible fire. No one was injured, but the mill was an entire, you know, a complete loss. It was $50,000 of damage um, estimated at the time in 1931. The thought behind the fire was that someone had been working on the machinery cutting it up to ship it off to another location and that had started the blaze. Um, so it was accidental, um, but it resulted in a site that was totally destroyed, deserted, um, and it was kind of a waste uh, for decades after that. So it wasn't until the 1960s when the town acquired the site and then the 1980s when there was finally energy in and you know energy behind improving the location to create the park that we have today. So um, when you're walking through Royal River Park and thinking about the greenery and the flowers and the beautiful river, remind yourself that that is actually the heart of industrial Yarmouth and has gone through some incredible changes over the years. On display at the History Center, we have a couple of artifacts from the Royal River Manufacturing Company. This is the brick mill on Bridge Street. In our display case, we have some spindles that were part of the weaving process that were, was used in the mill. And we also have on display one of the seamless grain bags that was produced at that mill. These were grain bags that were designed for shipping grain, of course, and other things like dried beans or peas, anything that you needed to ship in a great quantity and that would make an enormous mess if a seam split and um, all of the contents spilled out. So these were really effective um, bags for transporting these types of materials. Uh, they come in all different designs. Some are striped, some are plain. They have different uh, logos and stamps on them over time. 
uh, but we have a great example that you can see here in the History Center. We also have a shuttle on display at the History Center. This is a, another tool that would have been used at the cotton mill on Bridge Street. The shuttle would have been used to shoot the weft into the um, loom to create the woven grain bags that they were creating at the mill. Another artifact we have on display in our museum is the bale dolly that they would have used at the Royal River Manufacturing Company. This is something that you could have put a bale of cotton on and used to transport it across the mill to different levels or wherever it was needed in the mill. We also have some photos of the workers of the mill on display. So you'll see some of these show some of the women and, and some of the children who worked at the cotton mill um, in the 19th and early 20th century. The photograph behind me shows a great view of the poplar wood piles that would have supplied the forest paper company pulp mill. You can see the massive amounts of poplar wood that were being shipped to the site. Over on the left-hand side, there is um, evidence of the train sidings that came into the site to supply the wood. The houses up in the uh, top of that photo, those are all along East Elm Street. So essentially, this photo was taken as if you were standing in Royal River Park, or actually it's probably taken up from the digester towers looking back towards East Elm Street. So it just gives you a sense of the scale and size of that operation when it was at its height. This is probably right after the turn of the 20th century, so early 1900s when this was taken. Another great thing about this photo is that it shows you some of the bridges that cross the river, so proof that this mill complex really spanned both sides of the river. We had a lot of the chemical manufacturing process and de-chipping and, uh, or debarking and chipping happening over on the park side of the river. And then on the other side, which you can see from some of the walking trails, those were where those digester towers were located, um, which were probably about 50 to 60 feet tall. Um, and that was where the bulk of the uh, wood pulping process was happening where those logs were being boiled down um, into their uh, component wood pulp. You can see a sample of the finished paper pulp um, on display in our case at the History Center. It looks like almost finished kind of rough paper, sort of like the type you would use for paper towels, and that raw product would be shipped off to other paper mills that would then finish it into the different types of paper that were desired. Also at the History Center, we have a photograph of some of the mill owners and managers. This includes George Hammond, who was the local manager of the mill. He was, of course, connected to the S.D. Warren family um, in Westbrook. And he, as the manager of the mill, wanted to make sure he had a, a chance to oversee the mill when he was here enjoying Maine for the summer. And so he built Camp Hammond, which is still standing on Main Street. It's his summer house. Um, set back off of Main Street. Now it functions as an event venue. It's a beautiful red um, uh, cottage style house um, and it still has a lot of its original features inside. So the stone fireplace, some of the beautiful woodwork. Interestingly, it was designed by Hammond to be slow burning. He was someone who had a history with mills, understood just how devastating fires could be and wanted to make sure his house did not fall to that same fate and so had it designed like a mill essentially so that if it caught fire it would burn very slowly it would not spread easily and so it could be put out safely before there was much damage unfortunately that never happened and the house is still standing today as a great reminder of Yarmouth's mill history other artifacts we have from the forest paper company on display at the history center include a shipping crate and a great map it's an insurance map of the entire mill site that details the sizes of the buildings, the materials they were made out of. It shows you the um, extension across the river. It gives you a sense of the scale and scope of the mill site. It's really a fascinating document. We also have a wonderful panoramic photo that shows the extent of that mill site with the background of Yarmouth. So you can spot some familiar landmarks like the library, Camp Hammond is visible. Um, so it just shows just how central the mill location was to the rest of Yarmouth. It really was this kind of industrial heart of the town. I think Yarmouth's mill history is a really fascinating part of our local history. If you are interested in learning more, you are very welcome to come see us at the History Center. Check our website, yarmouthmehistory.org, or give us a call or email. If you have other questions, we're happy to answer them or talk more about mill history.